Welcome back friends! If you've been following my journey, you know I've recently assembled a piece of history right here in my studio, an Altair 8800. Today we're going back in time to see how early computers were programmed and to run a classic calculation that mathematicians and programmers alike adore, no, the factorial. Programming in the early days of computing was a far cry from the drag and drop interfaces of today. We're talking about a time when the term quote user-friendly was alien. Early computers, like the ENIAC, were programmed using plug boards, and later machines used punch cards. The programs themselves were primarily focused on calculations and data processing for scientific, engineering, and military applications. But then came the Altair 8800, a machine that you could actually have in your home. This wasn't just any computer, it was a harbinger of the personal computing revolution. But with all its innovation, it came with its own set of programming challenges. Today we're going to write a program in a single language for the Intel 8080 CPU, the same one used in the Altair 8800. We will then convert this program into machine code and input it into our computer mirroring the methods used to program the earliest computers. Here's the assembly code for calculating the factorial of a number. Assembly language is one step above machine code, and it allows us to use mnemonics to represent the instructions. This makes it somewhat easier to understand than raw binary or octal codes. Let's break down some of these instructions. The MVI instruction loads an immediate value into the specified register. In our code, MVIC 5 hex loads the number 5 into the C register, which is the value we want to find the factorial of. MVIA 1 hex loads the number 1 into the A register, which will be used to store the factorial result. The call malt instruction tells the computer to execute a multiplication subroutine defined later in the program. Since the Intel 8080 processor does not have a direct multiplication instruction, the malt subroutine simulates this by repetitively adding the number to itself, a process facilitated by the malt loop subroutine. The malt loop subroutine effectively adds a number to the total n number of times, mimicking multiplication. After each multiplication, control returns to the fact loop through the ret instruction, which brings the execution back to the instruction immediately following the original call to malt. Back in the main fact loop function, the program decrements the C register and calls the malt again, this time with the newly decremented value. When C is eventually decremented to zero, the final factorial result in the A register is stored in memory location 100 hex, which corresponds to 256 in decimal. The program concludes by executing the HLT instruction, the halt instruction, signaling the processor to stop execution. Each of these assembly instructions corresponds to an opcode that the processor understands. Take the instruction MVIC 5 hex for instance. It translates to two separate bytes in hexadecimal, 0e and uh, 05. Looking at the Intel 8080 CPU documentation, we can break this down further. The MVI instruction upcode begins with 0e when it targets the register C, which in binary is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. The 0, uh, 5 hex is the data we're reading or loading into the register. In binary, that's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. The opcode for MVI has two components, the operation code or opcode and the data byte. The opcode 0E indicates an MVI operation for register C, as specified by the Intel 8080's instruction set. Specifically, 0E breaks down to 00 for the MVI operation, followed by 001, which uniquely identifies register C in the instruction set architecture. 
each byte is entered into the Alter computer sequentially. You'll enter 0000 1110 into the first memory location, followed by 0000 0101 into the next memory location, which is location 1. Additionally, one way we can speed up the entry of our program into the Alter computer is by converting the hexadecimal code into octal digits. Now why octal? Because the Altair 8800's front panel uses switches representing bits, and those switches are grouped in threes, which aligns with the octal number system, where each digit represents a 3-bit binary number. This makes it easier to enter programs using octal, as each switch position corresponds to a single octal digit. Now that we have our program in a format that can be easily entered into the computer, let's go ahead and start inputting it. First, power on the machine. Then perform a hard reset. Next, select address 0 and toggle the examine switch. Now we're ready to enter the program into the machine. The first byte is octal 016 which corresponds to the opcode for MVIC. So we enter that by setting the first set of switches to the octal equivalent of 0, the second set to octal equivalent of 1, and the third set to the octal equivalent of 6. For the second byte, which is octal 005, we set the first group of switches to 0, the second group to 0, and the third group to the octal equivalent of 5 we will proceed to enter the remaining bytes of the program into the computer in the same manner. Now that we've carefully entered our machine code using the front panel switches, it's time for the moment of truth. I'll now toggle the run switch to execute the program. We have the option to single step through the program to observe each instruction in action, but I'll leave that for you to explore. Keep an eye on the panel as I flip the switch, because the program will execute swiftly. Watch the LEDs flicker and then notice the wait light illuminate, indicating that the computer has completed the process and has been halted. And that's it. The program has executed in less than a second. Now let's review the results stored in memory location 100 hex, as we had defined in our program. To do this, we'll reset the computer to access the memory contents safely. After the reset, I'll set the front panel switch to address 0, 0100 hex, that's 256 in decimal. And then I'll activate the examine switch. Look at the LEDs. They're showing the binary value of 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. For those of you who are now versed in binary, you'll recognize this is as 120 in decimal which confirms the program is correct. The factorial 5 is indeed 120. Programming the Altair 8800 is more than just writing code. It's an immersive experience that connects us to the history of computing and gives us a hands-on appreciation for the technological leaps we've made. If you're interested in programming an Altair 8800 but don't have a physical unit, Consider visiting s2js.com slash Altair. I'll leave a link in the description for that. This site offers a well-functioning Altair 8800 simulator that even accepts uploads of binary code to run on the computer. And that's all for today. If you're fascinated by how we interact with machines at the most fundamental level, please give this video a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more retro computing adventures. In future videos, I'm planning to connect a terminal to the Altair, which will significantly enhance the programming and operation experience. So, stay tuned! 
Until next time, keep those switches flipping and your lights blinking.